My name is Bethwin Evans and I'm a Chief Investigator in the Centre of Excellence for the Dynamics of Language and also in the Linguistics um, Department in the College of Asia and the Pacific at the Australian National University. Historical linguistics is important because um, the way languages are today, both at a small scale, the way each of us speak as an individual, the way we, um, the norms we follow, you know, the way we speak in a community, but also the distribution of languages on a global scale all reflects the history of those languages, which is not just the history of language, but the history of their speakers. So language and historical linguistics provides us one window on the human past. The main project that I find quite exciting at the moment is continuing working on quite a small scale on languages of Bougainville in Papua New Guinea. So Bougainville is an island with about 20 languages from three very different language families. Um, and looking at the history of language there is interesting in terms of understanding processes of continuity and change in language across time and space and the way in which language can be a window on um, the way different groups of speakers were talking to each other in the past and interacting with each other. Something that's very striking when you go to, the, to southern Bougainville is that the term for grandmother is the same across all of the languages, even though they're very distinct languages. And grandmother is just such a significant um, kin relationship in Bougainville because clan structures are maternal, so knowing your maternal grandmother is knowing all about your clan structure and how you're related to everybody else. Um, and other kinds of changes in the details of the kinship system, I think, open up windows into the kinds of process, social processes that would have gone on as um, speakers of different languages came together and sort of negotiated living within um, neighbouring and also um, the same communities, but keeping their languages and keeping their different, different ways of life. For me, I'm thinking about language change within languages and language families within the sort of time depth that we can reconstruct um, based on language. So the time depth that where we still have um, enough left in today's language um, that's a record of, of that past, which we think is probably about 10,000 years. So a very short period of time in comparison to how long perhaps humans have been using language. Um, so being part of the centre, um, and, and talking to some of the philosophers who are working on the evolution of language as a, a sort of aspect of human life um, has made me start to think about um, the kinds of connections that we have at that, that much more shallow time depth, the kinds of changes going on there and the cognitive processes that are perhaps driving language change at the more shallow, shallow time depth and how that connects with the, the kinds of cognitive processes that were driving the evolution of language itself.